Today, today, we're gonna win. We're gonna fight, fight, fight. Notre Dame stops it. The Irish win the game. Play with your brothers. You got a great opportunity. Let's go seize the moment. Let's go play. Inside Notre Dame football with Brian Kelly is presented by Team Notre Dame members Adidas, Gatorade, McDonald's, Coca-Cola, and Sprint. Inside Notre Dame football is also brought to you by ATI Physical Therapy, Bank of America, Cadillac, CBTS, Xfinity, Meyer, Notre Dame Federal Credit Union, Sears, Sirius XM Satellite Radio, and UPS. You worked hard during the week and you got <coughs> repaid. You got repaid because you stuck together and you played for four quarters. So who are you? Uh, we're, it, listen, we're still work in progress. We got work to, there's things we got to clean up. We know that. There's more things that we've got to accomplish. We get that. But you should never, never think about anything else but you will play hard for four quarters. Irish head coach Brian Kelly after Notre Dame's 31-24 victory over Purdue on Saturday night. Hello again, Irish fans, and welcome to this week's edition of Inside Notre Dame Football with Brian Kelly. I'm Jack Nolan. Purdue got off to a terrific start Saturday, and the Irish did not. But Notre Dame finished strong, scoring 21 points in the fourth quarter. The most points by an Irish team in the final stanza on the road since Notre Dame scored 21 at Pittsburgh back in 1997. It's not necessarily how you start, it's how you finish. Um, Purdue needs to get a lot of credit for the way they played the game, uh, but our guys ultimately um, learned that it's making plays and executing down the stretch. Maybe I should get that. Maybe you shouldn't. Brian Erlacher? I'm back to defend you from DirecTV's latest offer. With DirecTV, your bill more than doubles after a year. Not cool. And they lock you into a two-year contract that could cost you over 3,000 bucks. That's a lot of cheese. That's why the smart play is Xfinity. With the X1 platform, your DVR can record four shows while you watch the game live. Go long. Don't get sacked by DirecTV. Oops. Call 1-800-XFINITY today. One more, one more. Go, 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 completely controlled the first quarter against the Irish and kept Notre Dame out of the end zone in the first half, taking a 10-3 lead into the locker room at halftime. They played very well. I'll give them a lot of credit. Their defensive game plan was, was outstanding. Uh, they did a lot of very good things, uh, disrupted us offensively. 10 nothing's not that big a hole, but 10 is better. And you do score late in the second quarter, and one of the reasons was a big pass play to Chris Brown. Yeah, we were able to get the ball down the field. Uh, we felt like we had some good matchups on the perimeter. They were extremely aggressive near the box, playing you know a lot of uh, man coverage on the outside. Um, and we just like our matchups. Tommy was able to get the ball down the field. Chris made a nice catch. We would have liked to see him stay in bounds, but uh, you know, got us in a position where we could now get some points on the board. What is your mindset as you go into the locker room at halftime? I felt like we were going to win the football game. Uh, we needed to settle down a little bit. Uh, Tommy needed to kind of uh, take control. We made a couple of adjustments and defensively I didn't think that they were going to be able to run the football on us. Uh, we just needed to keep the ball in front of us. You get the ball to start the half, you drive right down the field. A couple of big plays at the end of that drive to TJ. 19 yards on third down, third and nine, and then the 27 yarder over in the corner and he makes a great catch. Uh, just an outstanding catch, concentration. Um, we're looking for him one-on-one. -on -one. We think that if we get the ball near him, uh, he's even if the defender's there, he's going to make plays, and TJ Jones continues to do that. You knew Cam McDaniel was scrappy, 
but this is the first time he showed the public certainly in a game and maybe the staff as well that he can be a physical back for you. His lot was cast with us. We knew what we're going to get from Cam. It's just opportunities and the game situations and we've got so many talented backs that it's just it's what kind of game you're in really determines who's in the game and uh, we needed that kind of physical downhill running because of the way uh, we were being defended and uh, it did a very nice job of uh, you know, giving us that kind of run game. But Daniel scores the touchdown, and then on the ensuing kickoff, a pretty good one for Purdue, he makes the tackle. Yeah, it, it was not our finest kick. Um, Kyle, after that, kicked the ball out of the end zone, so it was great, uh, but he does. He comes right after a touchdown. I, you know, I think it, uh, it was one of those things where he kind of lost um, focus there for a second because we had to holler at him to get him on the kickoff team, but he got out there and made the tackle, and. Uh, but that's not the kind of field position we want to put our defense in to start the, uh, that drive. McDaniel tackle Purdue's B.J. Kanoff at the Purdue 46 on that return, and the Boilers capitalized with another touchdown on the ensuing drive to retake the lead at 17-10, just about midway through the third quarter. But the Irish responded to the challenge their coach gave them in the locker room at halftime, with the offense scoring three more touchdowns after Purdue took the lead for the final time. Everybody had to step up big in the second half. And again, when, when you're down at the half, um, everybody's got to play better. And I thought all 11 came together in the second half and played uh, very efficiently on the offensive side of the ball. to try new things. Now we have bold new tastes like never before. You like things made by hand. We're now grilling up freshly made egg whites. You like to cool down. We just added a refreshing new smoothie. You get wrapped up in things. We're introducing new delicious ways for you to eat. There's no one quite like you. Now more than ever, there's something for everyone to love at McDonald's. DNR app. Go to I'mLovingIt.com. Customer Aaron Swenson bought from us online today. So I'm happy. Sales go up, I'm happy. It went out today, I'm happy. What if she's not at home? She, she won't be, be happy. happy. Use UPS. She can get a text alert, reroute, even reschedule a package. It's UPS my choice. You happy? I'm happy. I'm happy. I'm happy. I'm happy. I'm happy. 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 I love logistics. The Irish began the fourth quarter still trailing 17 to 10, but with the ball first and goal at the nine. Tommy Reese put the ball in the air on three straight snaps with the third pass resulting in a touchdown to Devaris Daniels. They, they wanted to be in man to man coverage. We were pretty determined that we were going to take our one on one matchups. We thought that, uh, you know, we had one opportunity with TJ. He couldn't come down with the catch. So we went back to the field and uh, Daniels made a great catch, took the ball away from the defender and really showed strong hands and um, uh, I credit, uh, obviously, the catch, but uh, very good recognition by Tommy uh, going to the one-on-one -on -one matchup. And after that tying touchdown, the D steps up, gets you back the ball, first down on your own 18, you go deep, beautiful 82-yard touchdown. Yeah, great throw by Tommy, great protection, and then after the catch, just a phenomenal effort by Daniels to, to shake off Allen, one of the most experienced corners in the Big Ten, and just a physical display of the kind of talent level that uh, Diverse Daniels has. A different kind of reception. Bennett Jackson comes up with a huge pick six. Yeah, they had run that route earlier uh, where they were out of a bunch look and ran a drive back across the field and, and Bennett really recognized it and cut underneath the route and, and again for the second consecutive week our defense comes up with a touchdown and uh, gives us a, a little bit of breathing room uh, with that big touchdown. Purdue is pretty fired up and again huge game for them in the first year of a new head coach. They score again. You get the ball back. Start a drive with 722 left 
and you never give the ball up. Yeah, well, we gave the ball up, unfortunately, the series before with a fumble. And, and you know, again, it's just one of those things where Amir had um, you know, played great for us. They got the ball out. Our defense did a great job. I mean, I think that's one of the things that gets overlooked, Jack, is that, you know, there's a plus field possession that our defense comes up great in the fourth quarter on the road. Uh, stops Purdue from getting any points, and then we get the ball with 722, as you mentioned, and, and we run the clock out. And that's knowing uh, prior to that that we had to convert a big third down, and Tommy Reese to Daniels again on a third down pass when everybody knows you're throwing the football. Um, I think that was the key to the game. Leadership from Tommy, both on the field, but even on the sidelines. You just talk about how he is progressing. Well, it was up to him to take over the team in the second half on offense. And um, we told him at the halftime that we're going to win this game based upon how you perform in the second half. You've got to take this game over. Uh, you've got to calm us down. And uh, we're going to give you an opportunity to win this game. And he took it over. He took it over on the sideline. Uh, and he showed his leadership. And uh, it was great to see. There is your final score. Notre Dame defeats Purdue for the sixth year in a row. Tommy Reese threw for 309 yards in the contest, his third straight 300-yard game. After the game in the locker room, Coach Kelly presented Tommy Reese with the game ball. There is a look at your final stats provided by UND.com. Notre Dame ends up winning all the major statistical categories, including the turnover battle with a flawless night in that area. It's time now for this week's strong and true moment of the game presented by ATI Physical Therapy. This week we feature the 82 yard touchdown pass from Tommy Reese to Devaris Daniels to put the Irish on top for good. Going deep down the right sideline, got a man open, Daniels. Still going in the clear, not marked out of bounds, goes all the way to the end zone. If you use the Twitter world as a thermometer to take the temperature of Irish fans at halftime of Saturday night's game, it would be fairly accurate to say there was more than a little panic in ND Nation. That emotion did not extend to the players as they took the field for half number two. A lot of teams, you know, being down like that, coming in the second half, you know, so they might fold. You know, we stuck together and we got through it. You know, we got a long way to go, but, you know, hopefully we'll get there. You know, it's just the, the character of this group. Uh, you know, we have a tough group. We have a, a group that just fights. You know, we're not, we're not perfect. We, you know, we make a lot of mistakes sometimes, but, um, you know, this is a tough group that fights to the end, and, uh, you know, we showed that tonight. We, to do, we went the game on our, in our hands at the end of the game, and we were able to close it out tonight. It was great. I mean, I feel like, you know, we, we do a great job at always keeping games interesting. But, um, you know, a W is a W, so we were extremely happy about that. And, uh, you know, all the guys are fired up, coaches are fired up. Just really proud of the whole offense and the whole team for how they fought in the second half. And that's you know, a true testament to the character of the guys. Now you guys it felt great to battle back. Um, you know, to have the you know, type of character and the type of uh, mentality we had throughout the entire team, uh, you know, proud of every single one in that locker room. Irish fans often forget Notre Dame lost some tremendous leaders off last year's 12-1 team, but the guys stepping into those roles took a big step forward against Purdue. The guys, you know, kept the right mentality. And we, you know, the leaders, and we were trying to keep, you know, telling them it's going to come down to us. We got to keep our heads in it. Just kind of stayed confident in ourselves, really. Uh, and once we saw, you know, we had the momentum on our side and everybody was playing at a higher level, uh, we kind of just took it and ran with it. Just how special this season will be for the Notre Dame football team as a whole remains to be determined. But for two of the starters on Notre Dame's offensive line, every minute of the season has been and will be very special. We'll go behind the scenes with the Martin brothers right after this timeout. You wait all year for summer. This summer was definitely worth the wait. Summer's best event from Cadillac. Let summer try and pass you by. Lease this all new Cadillac ATS for around $299 per month or purchase for 0% APR for 60 months. The best offers of the model year end September 3rd. Can I help you? <coughs> 
excuse me, hi. Uh, I wanted to find out about the unlimited for life guarantee. Sure, Sprint is guaranteeing unlimited talk, text, and data for life. Cool, 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 cool. And uh, what if, say, technically you were not alive? Mm. Like, maybe you were undead? Like a zombie. Whoa, let's not go putting labels on people. I'm a zombie. Switch to Sprint and get unlimited for life. And now, save up to $100 on any phone. How unusual is it to have two brothers start in the same offensive line? Well, Irish left tackle Zach Martin and center Nick Martin are the first brothers to start on Notre Dame's offensive line since Dave and Tim Huffman did it way back in 1978, long before Zach or Nick were even born. However, the Martins aren't all that interested in creating historical footnotes. They are more interested in creating great memories for themselves and their teammates. We followed the Martins through their first game as starters at Notre Dame. Today, a 125th football season at Notre Dame begins amid heightened levels of anticipation and expectations. A big reason why I returned to school was to have an opportunity to play with, with my little brother Nick. I knew he was going to have a chance to, to be out there and start. I thought it would be really cool to have that experience. You know, obviously, a lot of people look at it as, you know, why not go make the big money, but he loves it here. We have a great, you know, family, just kind of atmosphere here. He wanted to come back. I got it right here. You're making a decision uh, based upon finances over friendship and, in this instance, family. Can you put a monetary number on what it is to play with your brother? Uh, I don't think you can. Well, the way, you know, people look at it is that uh, I passed up on money and they don't know what goes into a place like this or the relationships that you form at a place like this. <laughs> How special it is to have the opportunity to step on a field with your brother and, and play in front of 80,000 people. The people who say that just don't, don't get what, what Notre Dame is all about. I was nervous during the week, but I woke up game day and was just ready. And now come the Irish for the first time in 2013. Right that tunnel looking up, kind of Pause for a moment, seeing that uh, 80,000 strong was definitely different this time, knowing I was going to be on the field. Well, I'm sure there'll be a time in the, in the huddle when they're on the field together that he'll look over and uh, across the line and say, wow, this is my little brother playing along with me. And that'll be a special moment for us, both of them. He had a big old smile on his face and first drive when you score in three plays and know that you're a part of it and that you helped, you know, get that done, it's, it's a pretty good feeling. I mean, it was my first, you know, experience on the field. Big touchdown, first drive, couple plays, got the score. It was, it was a great feeling. And Zach and Nick teaming up on Notre Dame's <laughs> offensive line in Zach's final year. We said this when we recruited uh, Nick, is that we're not recruiting Nick unless he could stand on his own two feet. They need to have that satisfaction or it doesn't work. Yeah, and Nick did not have a scholarship offer from Notre Dame until late. If they're here because of their brother and their accomplishments, um, it, it really works the other way. Quick pop out to Amir Carlisle. We ran a screen out to the left, and I ran, and I turned up, and I saw someone, and then I saw Nick get on him. I turned up, and uh, I saw Zach kind of hit this guy, and I, I just saw my, you know, saw my target and went in the middle and just kind of just playing him really. <laughs> And I kind of turn my head and out of my corner of my eye, I see Nick just playing. I'm like 20 yards down the field. I was like, all right, Nick, Nick's ready to go. He can, he can take care of it. Seeing Nick grow up and being with him and Zach, and you know what we did, did the, for the game yesterday and how, how well we played, it was just, it was, it, was, it was a great moment. To really put it on the field is, is what we're looking for, and um, you know, I think he was able to do that. The display of toughness and a display of whipping your man every play is something that I think Nick does very well. And, uh, does a good job of uh, bringing that to the table every day. It's great to know that Zach can go in there and be accomplished. And now here comes Nick. He gets a chance to, to sing the fight song knowing uh, that he played for Notre Dame and did very well. 
Of course, the Martin brothers were a big part of the Irish victory Saturday night, especially the final drive that included 12 runs in 13 plays as the Irish literally ran out the final seven minutes and 22 seconds of their win at Purdue. Also contributing was sophomore wide receiver Chris Brown, whose 40 yard reception in the second quarter helped set up Notre Dame's first score, earning Brown an easier gig. Catching our questions on this week's 60 second drill. First car you ever drove. Uh, 1997 Acura. What did you do in your first date? Uh, movies. <laughs> Favorite ice cream flavor? Fudge brownie. Favorite breakfast meal? Um, Frosted Flakes. Get up early or sleep in? <sighs> sleep in. Best nickname on the team and who has it? Um, I say shoe. Best player to room with on the road? Uh, CJ Process. First word that comes to mind when you think about Camp Shiloh? Team. <laughs> Climbing wall or zip line? Zip line, easy. Best singer on the team? Whoa, myself. <laughs> Best dancer on the team? Uh, Tori Hunter. Best comedian on the team? Amir Carlisle. Best dresser on the team? Jalen Brown. <laughs> Worst dresser on the team? Ooh, Amir Carlisle. <laughs> Best thing about playing for Notre Dame? Um, just having great teammates and playing for a great university. Chris Brown, you've completed 60 seconds at Inside Notre Dame Football. Thank you. <laughs>